Hello, and welcome to our celebration of Newton at Home's 10th anniversary. I'm Arthur Glasgow, co-president of Newton at Home. When I retired 10 years ago, I started looking to do volunteer work. I had plenty of activities and interests to keep me busy, but I wanted to continue to be useful. Friends referred me to Newton at Home, which had just become operational. From the minute I began to drive members to their doctor's appointments, their barbers or hair salons, the airport, taking them shopping, or doing small handyman jobs in their homes. I realized this was a terrific opportunity to get to know these interesting people. Some were over 100 years old and still living independently. They became my mentors for aging successfully. All made me feel useful. So tonight's celebration gives me, and many others, the chance to say thank you to this wonderful organization. Newton at Home has given me 10 fulfilling years of gratification. Every day, it gives all its members the opportunity to age in place in their own homes or apartments on their own terms, thrive in an active community, and live lives of connection and purpose. Newton at Home is certainly worth celebrating, and we thank you for joining us in honoring the organization's success and two women, Tamara Bliss and State Senator Cynthia Cream, who made that possible. Before we begin, I'd like to remind all of you that one household attending tonight will receive a certificate for an overnight stay at the Marriott, a perfect gift for family or friends who want to visit you this summer. Watch your email tomorrow to find out if you're the lucky winner. One housekeeping note, we chose to make this event free and open to anyone in the community. But if you would like to support Newton at Home financially, we'll be providing a link at the end of the program that will take you right to our website's donation page. Now, I'd like to invite Sue Paley, Vice President of Community Relations for Village Bank, our major sponsor for this event, to say a few words. Thank you, Newton at Home, for a decade of fabulous service, enabling our seniors to stay in their own homes in safety and in dignity. I join with the entire Village Bank family in thanking the employees, the volunteers, the board, the families of Newton at Home. Uh, we join in honoring tonight's special guests, Tamara Bliss, State Senator Cindy Cream. Thank you all for all you do, and thank you Maureen Grannon, the wonderful Executive Director of Newton at Home. Thank you, thank you, thank you from the Village Bank. Thank you, Sue not just for your brilliant enthusiasm and Village Bank's continuing support of Newton at Home, but for all the beneficial work you do throughout our community. We're thrilled tonight to be honoring our founding president, Tamara Bliss. To get us started, we're first going to hear from a few people who know Tamara well and know how important she has been to Newton at Home. Tamara Bliss came into our organization, which perhaps didn't even have a name at that moment, um, because we had spent a year or two of background work trying to create what we thought would be um, a useful addition to the Newton community, a service for um, residents 60 and older to enable them to remain in their homes. But we had done quite a bit of work, but we still at that moment felt we need a leader who had strong experience ties to Newton um, organizations and nonprofits. And as we looked around for such a person, Tamara appeared before us, and she was really the ideal choice of a leader for us. As we came to realize that um, those of us who were involved with Newton at home at that point didn't have the experience that was needed um, to bring this to a successful fruition, to create a program that served our large suburban community. And we met with Tamara and discovered very quickly that she was the force we needed to create the leadership and the momentum that we needed to bring this about. I've uh, had an opportunity to look at some of the old uh, Noon at Home files from 2009, 2010, because I've been moving and it's amazing what I found there, um, and really amazing what Tamara and the um, gang of merry men and gang of merry women that she got together to form Newton at Home. There's 
my background is as a management consultant, and it's really, really difficult to start things up, um, start any organization or department or division or what have you. So Tamara led the whole bunch of us in conceptualizing what needed to get done, and she did a, a really terrific job prioritizing, gathering, uh, cajoling, um, uh, volunteers and having everybody move more or less in the sa same direction, very difficult. Uh, fundraising, um, making management decisions that are very difficult to make at the beginning, again, when you don't have, have many contexts. I think one of the things that I really uh, admire about Tamara is the energy, and not only sort of straight energy, but the energy to do so many different things that when something needed to get done, she would jump in. When something wasn't working well, she would jump in. Um, when everything was working well, um, she would find some other other area um, that needed some help or could be done. Um, and it was just wonderful to watch um, how, how much she could get done in a day, in a week, in a month. I think that Tamara, and in fact, I know Tamara would be the first to acknowledge that the success of Newton and Home uh, is the result of uh, a lot of work by a large number of people. But uh, in my mind, there's no doubt that uh, uh, the rest of the effort would not have been nearly as successful as it was without Tamara's leadership that uh, she showed how tenacious, uh, focused, uh, and simply unwilling to, to accept uh, defeat, uh, but wanting to just press on. I think one of Tamara's unique contributions, that is one that really only she could have made, uh, was the sense of having members interact with one another and provide much of the, uh, or many of the services uh, that they would uh, receive, uh, either through reading clubs, uh, trips to local uh, sites, uh, uh, book clubs. Uh, and in a way, uh, this enabled uh, members uh, to provide so many services to others that enrich everyone and it, it lessened the need for for volunteers and it made the members a, a more close-knit group a real community interacting with one another providing services from one to one another we began providing services to our members in april of 2011 and throughout this time tamara's leadership her stamina uh, were simply indispensable she was so focused, tireless and determined, but also resilient and able to adjust to unforeseen circumstances and challenges that many, many folks contributed to the opening and to the success of Newton at Home. But she was really the indispensable uh, ingredient uh, in the, in, in the uh, mixture. And with, without Tamara's vision, her energy, her persistence, and simply her resilience, Newton and Home would not be where we are today and would not have accomplished as much as it has in its 10 year history. I first met Tamara Bliss as a freshman city councilor and she was a tremendous wealth of information and an indefatigable source of energy on the question of housing generally and of housing for Newton seniors in particular. Her work at Newton at Home has been inspirational in allowing seniors to age in place with dignity and security. I want to extend my best wishes and my appreciation to Tamara Bliss and to wish Newton at Home a congratulations and a happy 10th anniversary. Thank you, Dave, Bob, Renata, and Congressman Auchincloss. Now we'll hear from Tamara herself in a conversation with someone who probably knows her better than anyone, her daughter, Mimi. Mimi is keenly aware of the benefits Newton at Home provides, not the least of which is the peace of mind it brings to adult children like her living far from their parents. Hey, Mom. Good to see you, Mimi. It's always good to visit Newton, even if it's virtual. Yes. So, Mom, I know you got involved with Newton at home. Um, 
because of the experience of caring for my grandparents as they got older. Tell me about that. Well, I was amazed at how difficult it was to find the resources they needed. Everything was so fragmented and to evaluate them. You know, I'm trained in social work and I had to hire a consultant to find really good resources for them. Well, that made me think, your dad and I are gonna get older. You know, who's gonna help us? And then I heard about Beacon Hill Village and I really liked that concept of creating a program and services that allowed people to stay in their own homes. And I thought, I hope someday someone will start one in Newton. So how did it get started then? How did we go from an idea to actually the beginning of Newton at home? Well, um, I was sitting uh, at a uh, luncheon I was attending with a friend and she said, you know, I'm all excited. I'm gonna be able to, I wanna stay in my home as I get older. And I said, oh, that's great, but how are you gonna do it? Well, I went to this meeting last night and there were a group of people who were exploring how to start a village, you know, like Beacon Hill Village. And I'm, I'm really excited about that, she said. Well, I was too, and I decided to join. Helped out with the early days, and then in, in November, I uh, went with some other members to a wonderful conference that Beacon Hill Village ran on how to start a village. And when I was asked to be president, I felt inspired to take on that role. My first job was, was identifying and recruiting board members. And by February 2009, we were able to incorporate as a, uh, as a nonprofit organization. What, you know, I know growing up, you and dad were involved in the community. You knew a lot of people in Newton, whether it was through the League of Women Voters or political campaigns, the environment, uh, transportation issues. How did that network within Newton help you in those early days? Oh, it was absolutely uh, crucial because uh, I not only knew people who might want to get involved, the people I did know helped me find others, whether they were friends or elected officials. When I read that Vern Vance was retiring from years on the board of Alderman, I called him and said, convinced him to join the board of Newton at home. I have pretty vivid memories of those first few years. You know, you, you um, ran Newton at home out of what was my childhood bedroom. You know, you had a desk and a computer and you had a lot of committed volunteers for that two-year planning process. Talk to me about that. Well, when we first got started, we were mostly people with social work backgrounds, and we got very lucky when Dave Chosey had found us and was able to add his skills in operational strategic planning and computers and many other things, and we had a great time working together. We recruited more than 75 volunteers who worked on nine committees to figure out everything from what services to have to how much we should charge. We even had individuals, you know, figuring out liability insurance, looking for an office, setting up a website. So it was a big planning process. One of the things I really like and think is really neat is you were able to find volunteers to provide so many different services. You know, when, when someone needs something, it's a volunteer who can come and provide that. Oh, Mimi, you're absolutely right. From the get-go, we adopted a volunteer-first philosophy. Unless it was a new roof or a broken toilet, it, almost everything people need could be done by a volunteer. And we, over the years, we've recruited probably and trained more than 200 uh, volunteers. You know, they drive people to medical appointments into the doctors. They play, young people play chess with a homebound uh, member. Uh, they rake our leaves. It's just a whole range of, of activities um, they're, they're able to do. And it's a really important part of what we do. It's wonderful that the services are provided by volunteers. That's the incredible part of the organization. But any nonprofit, especially getting off the ground, needs funding for staff, for you know, the basics of running the organization. How did you raise money in the early days? Well, I got lucky. I had no experience raising money, but I found someone to mentor me, uh, teach me some of the basics. 
And most of all, she gave me courage to ask for $10,000 from the first board member and another 5,000 from another one. And once we got that off the ground, others gave, and then we began to formally uh, actively fundraise. That's wonderful. I'm, I'm glad that people were asked and they gave. What makes you most proud as you look back over 10 years? Well, I've already mentioned the volunteers, but particularly our community partnerships with scouts and athletic teams and high school students. Uh, you might remember that we had different groups coming to rake our leaves every year. One year was the girls hockey team from LaSalle. Then we had families who were volunteering together, bringing their young kids. But what I most remember is the teens who came over from the Boys and Girls Club it's right after Halloween and after they filled 20 bags with leaves and we were giving them cider on the deck, they started telling us about the haunted house they had created in, in Nonantum, which you know is just really close to where we live. And it just felt so good to connect with young people. Yeah, I remember all the leaves, so I'm impressed, you know, the size of that yard, that they, they raked all those leaves. And I like that because many people may have family who live far away. Their grandchildren may not be right there. So how wonderful. What makes you, as you look forward now to the next 10 years, what makes you optimistic about Newton at Home? We have a very strong working board with a wide variety of talents and experience. We have committed and dedicated and flexible staff and volunteers who are able to quickly adjust to the lockdown and pr still provide services virtually. And I think that all of us have learned in this very dark time of COVID that our relationships with both friends and family are even more important than ever. And that through our affinity groups, like the dining club and the book club, and all kinds of other activities we have, we build social connections, including with members and volunteers, so that I believe more people will see the value of joining uh, Newton at Home in the, in the future. I think the future looks bright. Well, I'm glad to have Newton at Home there, and thank you, and congratulations, and thank you to everyone who's here. We're so glad you could join us. Thank you, Tamara and Mimi, for that conversation. I think everyone watching was inspired by the vitally important role you played, getting Newton at home up and running. Now, our incomparable executive director, Maureen Grannon, will introduce our second honoree, State Senator Cynthia Cream. Thank you, Arthur. Good evening, and thank you all for joining us in our celebration of Newton at Home's first 10 years. I'm so proud to have been the executive director for nine of those 10 years, and it is my distinct pleasure to introduce our second honoree tonight. State Senator Cynthia Cream has had a distinguished career in the Massachusetts legislature and now serves as the majority leader of the Senate and the chair of its Committee on Global Warming and Climate Change. She and her husband Harvey have been members of Newton at Home since its inception. It was a family affair in that Harvey served as our first treasurer, leading us through the growing pains of a startup organization. From the outset, Cindy has been an avid supporter, loyal ally, and tireless advocate for Newton at Home, procuring critical earmarked funding that has enabled us to provide the enhanced programming services and personal attention that allows our members to thrive at home and contributes to our excellent reputation in the community. We are so grateful to Senator Cream for being in our corner and continuing to support our mission. Thank you, Cindy. I'm so honored to be here today to talk about Newton at Home and to receive this honor from them is very special. But the person I really want to say congratulations to is Tammy Bliss. Tammy had the idea and Tammy worked hard and she had the vision to make Newton at home what it is now and to have it 10 years later 
with all that hard work. I'm so pleased that you're honoring Tammy and I wanna add my congratulations to all of those that are coming. And I also wanna say that those people that volunteer and Maureen and all the hard work she's done, they are the people are the really people we honor today. So a thank you to all of the volunteers. Newton at Home would never be what it is if we didn't have all of those volunteers. My husband and I have been members of Newton at Home for quite a while, and I was so impressed with the organization, how important it is for seniors who are home, who may be isolated, who may not have the resources or the ability to do things, and they can stay in their home and call Newton at Home if they need help. This became even more important during COVID. If we talk about isolation and loneliness, we really suffered this past year. Recently, I looked at an email from Newton at Home and I saw if you wanted to knit, you could join them. If you wanted to read a book, you could join them. If you just wanted to talk or you wanted a friend, you could join Newton at Home. And I thought, what a wonderful thing. Fortunately, my husband and I haven't really had to take advantage of what's offered at Newton at Home. The interesting thing is during the vaccine rollout, and you all know, I certainly knew the access of how to get a vaccination. I knew all the websites. I got up at quarter of 12 when they were gonna open the web website and I couldn't get on. And I stayed till quarter of one. I practically fell asleep on the computer and I couldn't get an appointment. And then my husband noticed an email from Maureen with certain links, new links that were different than the state website. And one of those links was to someplace in Newton. And I went on and lo and behold, we got appointments. And we were so pleased inadvertently, we really were the recipients of what Newton at Home had to offer. And I'm so pleased that through the years, I have been able to convince my colleagues, make suggestions to them that Newton at Home could use some funding from our budget. And we have been doing that and wonderful programs have happened as a result of that funding. Now that we're talking about money, I hope anyone who is here on this program will write a check, donate some money, donate some time because we need Newton at Home for much, much more than 10 years. We need it for a very long time. So again, thank you all so much for honoring me. I'm honored. Thank you. Thank you, Senator Cream, for sharing your story about how Newton at Home has helped you personally, for your heartfelt support and steadfast commitment to us, and for encouraging everyone to contribute generously to our work. Now I'm delighted to introduce our keynote speaker, Brian McGrory, editor of the Boston Globe. Newton at Home provides many practical services for our members. But at bottom, our work is about supporting and building community. So we are lucky to have Brian McGrory share his thoughts with us today. For nearly three decades, Brian has devoted his career to strengthening communities in and around Boston. As a reporter and columnist, Brian has told hundreds of stories of ordinary people helping others. He has held accountable those officials who fell short, and he has held up examples of people like our Senator Cynthia Cream, who do so much for our community as public servants. As Metro Editor for The Globe, and now as Editor-in-Chief, Brian has served as a leader in keeping citizens informed and able to make informed choices. This is more important than ever at a time when many newspapers are vanishing. Brian has helped ensure that The Globe remains a vibrant pillar in our community. We at Newton at Home are honored to have Brian McGrory speak to us tonight. Good evening. It's an honor to have been asked to speak at such an important milestone for such a vital organization. It's especially nice to be part of a program that acknowledges the massive contributions of, of Newton at Home founding president, Tamara Bliss. Before I was in the role I have now, I was a longtime columnist for the Boston Globe. In doing that job and doing this one, I've had the privilege of learning a lot about the cities and towns around Boston and Boston itself and how they run. And I learned that it's not always the elected officials, the ones who are in the headlines the most, who have the biggest impact, or even the appointed officials who run big government agencies, or business executives who have influence over massive organizations. 
It's often the local activists, the do-gooders in every good sense of the word, who matter the most. They have an understanding of their communities. They know how to get things done. They are looking for results more than they're looking for credit. And they are brimming with empathy. This, from everything I know, pretty much defines Tamara Bliss. Her work has literally touched thousands upon thousands of people in Newton and beyond. Recipients of help from Newton at home who have been able to stay in their houses. Their families spread far and wide who have a sense of security knowing that their loved ones are being taken care of. In the many, many volunteers who find a sense of purpose and connection in this extraordinary work. If I could just join the chorus, thank you and congratulations to Tamara. And thank you and congratulations as well to Senator Cynthia Cream, who has helped this organization in countless ways, not only through her many policy decisions on Beacon Hill, but through her hands-on membership here in Newton. We are in an extraordinary moment right now. What just about every reasonable expert has said is the tail end of this global pandemic that has caused so much death and upheaval at a scale that a year ago was perfectly unimaginable. In this forced social isolation, there has been a premium placed on connection. At the Globe, our last day in the office together was March 11th, 2020. Like just about every other company, big and small, our newsroom and white collar offices went remote and we don't plan to go back until September. That obviously doesn't mean we haven't been working. I would modestly say that the Globe has done the most important work it's done in the 32 years that I've been part of the organization. I'm not just proud of what the Globe has done this past year, but what the whole journalism industry has accomplished. News organizations try to do many things. We hold powerful people and institutions accountable. We give voice to those who wouldn't otherwise have one. We inform and at times even try to entertain. We attempt to build and solidify a sense of community. Boston, as you know, is an extraordinary region, a place like none other. And in this unimaginable year, we at the Globe have done our level best to keep people informed over life and death matters, to bring our readers together, even if we have been forced apart, to hold institutions accountable for the decisions that they're making, to give everyone in a place that was hit harder than almost any place else a sense of common cause. We have written stories of triumph and unending pain. We have probed officials and agencies doing good work and bad work. We've even tried to inject some humor at times. Our readership has set one record after another. Our subscriber base is stronger now than it's been in 15 years. We have more journalists in our newsroom now than we did a year ago, something that not another regional paper in America can likely claim. It's come at no small cost. Our journalists have worked harder than quite literally they ever have before. They face the same enormous pressures as everyone else, including the people they're covering. Emotional and physical pressures, fear of getting sick, anxiety over the economic consequences of the virus, a sense of isolation or overcrowding depending on their situations at home, and just the massive feeling of unease and disruption that comes when something so big is hanging over your life that you simply can't control. Yet they continue to perform month after month, news cycle after news cycle, now closely monitoring the vaccine rollout, even as a bulk of our journalists remain unvaccinated themselves. They're watching the uneven economic recovery and the nagging threat that the virus just refuses to back down. All of it is in the name of building a stronger community among our readers and in our region. Which brings me to you. There are many organizations that have mattered deeply through this pandemic, but few on as many different levels as Newton at home. Stepping back, you don't need to hear it from me that the village movement has been an extraordinary one for years, profoundly impacting the lives of so many people in such deeply positive ways. Before the pandemic, Newton at Home improved the quality of people's lives by allowing them to remain in their homes. During this pandemic, when the virus ravaged some of the, even the best run congregate care facilities with impunity, you literally saved lives. In a year in which we had forced isolation, you did everything within your power to break through that 
and allow seniors in Newton to feel like they are part of something larger, to give them a sense of caring and compassion, even as a virus did everything it could to make people feel very much alone. You did it creatively. You did it often virtually. You did it too often thanklessly and with no small amount of concern over your own health and well-being. I hope you realize how important that was, is, and will continue to be. And I hope your work helped delay your own feelings of isolation, giving you a stronger sense of purpose in such an untethered time. And finally, and quite importantly, when you help seniors stay in their homes, you're not just helping the people in those homes, you're helping enrich the whole city. And here is a place where our mission is very much aligned. Your organization, like mine, is about making connections in the name of building a stronger sense of community. Communities flourish when they are filled with people of all backgrounds, ages, colors, experiences. They are young and old and rich and poor. And communities flourish even more when people are looking out for each other every day. The virus itself couldn't break those bonds here in Newton. In fact, it may have strengthened them. And Newton is all the better for the seniors that continue to live very much in the heart of the community. We live, unfortunately, in an age of division. Politics, the forces of inequality, racial disparities, so much of it exacerbated again and again by this virus and the impact it's had. But yours is an organization about bringing people together, most immediately in the relationships between volunteers and the recipients of those good deeds, but as importantly, in the richness of the community that results. We have better times ahead, hopefully just ahead. I hope you revel in every part of it in the months to come. In the meantime, my deepest thanks, personally and on the part of the globe, for all you've done for Newton, which is a very, very important town to us. Thank you. Thank you, Brian. We appreciate what you're doing at the Globe to keep us informed and engaged in what's happening here, in the country, and around the world. And thank you for sharing your thoughts on the important and positive role older adults play in our local communities. We thought it would be fun to briefly look back chronologically at some of Newton at Home's many activities over the past decade. Please enjoy this photo montage of our members and volunteers, the people who make Newton at Home, the special organization it is.
Now, as Newton at Home is looking forward to the next 10 years, we'd like to enter some thoughts from a few of our members about how much the organization means to them and what a vital role it plays in their lives. Newton at Home has opened up the world to me since I've been retired from nursing. And I had a very busy career and had no time for community activities. I have found that the social aspect for me is, has been terrific and has opened up the um, world of Newton to a person who didn't know Newton very well because I raised my children in Wellesley and moved here. And so I didn't know that very many people. Also, <clears throat> Newton at Home has introduced me to a diverse group of people who are very intelligent and very interesting. And I would not have met many of them unless I had joined this organization and have enjoyed so much learning from them. It's been a wonderful learning experience for me. Newton at Home solves your practical problems, and that is by, uh, that's in two ways. One is, uh, uh, to me, the most important way is that members help members, members help each other that's by volunteering to provide rides to members who no longer drive, uh, help with practical household repairs like, and so on. Uh, and, and, and you meet, uh, you, you meet, members meet each other by providing help, practical help to each other and uh, by being the recipients of that practical help. There are all sorts of issues that are faced by people who uh, have decided to try to stay at home. And NAH is an organization dedicated very effectively to dealing with those issues. And so that's how I would describe NAH. I was in my late 60s when I joined Newton at Home. So when I joined, I really didn't think I needed a lot of heavy duty services. But what I didn't realize I needed and what happened was I made so many new friends from Newton at Home. And I built this network in my own city, which I didn't have before. So that was very uh, enriching for me. And there were many ways in which this network got built. One was the handyman who came to the house I got to know. Another was the people who worked on the board and on the staff because I was involved in doing some marketing work for the organization and I got to meet them and interact with them and work with them as a volunteer and that was very meaningful. But the most important thing for me was when I started driving people to appointments. I could not believe the most, the wonderful people who I met. And of course, when you're driving in a car, you have plenty of time to get to know them. And many of them were extremely talkative. I will say that I have made three dear, dear friends from my driving and from services I did as a volunteer. So that's what Noon at Home really means to me. It means connection. It means um, people who I care about and care about me. It means an organization I can depend on if I need something. And it's a comfort level that is extremely nourishing. Thank you, Andy, Dorothy, and Mariah. Thank you, everyone, online, for tuning in this evening to share your interest in Newton at Home. Special thanks to the members of the host committee, our sponsors, our local advertisers, and of course, our wonderful staff, volunteers, board of directors, members and supporters of Newton at Home. Remember, you may donate any time to support Newton at Home financially by going to our website, newtonathome.org. Good night, everyone.